please raise your hand. Kelly's over here on your right. Robbie's over here on your left. So please raise your hand, and we'll start with questions for Coach O'Brien. Stage of training camp, uh, how are your quarterbacks looking coming in and how they've progressed through the early stages? Right, we're, uh, we just finished day three and um, we're really pleased with both guys. Um, very athletic. Uh, these guys can throw the football. Uh, Tyler came back and he's shown that uh, he's studied in the off season since spring practice and you know, they make their share of mistakes. You know, Tyler makes his share of mistakes, but he's, he's, he's had a good three days. And, and Christian, for uh, just being here for the first time, putting the pads on and, and practicing football, you know, he's done a really nice job of, of studying and trying to get better every day. You know, again, it's only three days, but we're certainly pleased with where, where they're at right now. Bill, there's back over here. Yeah. Where? Over here, hey. there's a, a lot less, I think, uncertainty surrounding the program this year. The players, I think, are more comfortable, um, less distractions. How big of a plus is that going forward this year for you? Well, I, I feel like even last year, I feel like we do a, a good job as a staff and, and our players do a good job of really being focused. I think we've got a focused bunch of guys. And, uh, you know, that's no different this year than it was last year. You know, we're, these guys are focused and attentive in meetings, and uh, they're, they're, uh, when they go out on the practice field, they're, they're, they're practicing hard, they, they're having some fun, and I feel like we're focused. And, and uh, you know, all we're concerned about right now is basically finishing up class strong here. We're still in summer school. Uh, final exams will be Friday and Saturday. And then really getting going with this training camp and focusing all of our attention on getting ready to play Syracuse. And I believe the players are uh, feel the same way. Bill, back to the quarterback. Has either guy been able to show any separation these first few days? Are you still again in the middle of camp? Just like the start. Oh, I would say after three days, you know, that, that Tyler is a little bit ahead, you know, again, because he has knowledge of the offense. So. Uh, sure, he, he's a little bit ahead. He, uh, he, he takes most of the reps for the first team right now. But uh, again, Christian's come in here and really uh, done a nice job for a true freshman to come in here and, and, and do the things that he's done in the first three practices is really good to see. He's, he's attentive. He must be uh, staying up late at night studying the playbook because he's come from day one to day two to day three and, and improved and he asks great questions in the meeting. So does Tyler. These are two talented guys. Now we got to get past all the recruiting, and we got to get past all that. These are two very talented quarterbacks at the Penn State football program now. And uh, you know, right now, like I said, only three practices in. I would say Tyler's a little bit ahead. Hey, coach. Can you talk about your expectations of the offensive line this season, and also the character of the guys up front? They seem like good guys and interesting guys as well. Right, you got it. They are. Uh, we, we have a lot of confidence in our offensive line. We, we feel at the tackle position, the guard position, and the center position, we've got guys there that have played a lot of football for us. Uh, even Gary Gilliam, who we moved over there from tight end, he's played a lot of football here at Penn State, especially last year. So uh, we're expecting him to come in there and help us. And uh, and so far in the first three days, that, that, that core group of six to eight guys there has done a nice job. Uh, and so we're, and they are, you're right, they're, they're very high character guys and uh, tough guys, smart, they communicate well. There's some characters up there, Diffenbach, you know, he's, he's got a, another career as a, you know, I mean, I won't say it was Saturday Night Live or something like that, but uh, he's, a, he's, he's a, you know, keeps a sense of humor in the room, high character guys that, uh, that are doing a nice job. Coach, coach, over here. How's, uh, how's Winnack's health, and also with the depth that you have at running back this year, how do you hope to incorporate all those guys, get them all involved in the offense? The depth at where? Running back. There's three of them. They're all going to play, and Zwinak's doing fine. All three running backs will play this year. Bill, is it accurate to say that 
both lines are where depth in your situation could be most of an issue necessarily and, and how many guys would you like to have in this situation to rotate in and out compared to what you would normally offensive yeah. and defensive line. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that um, uh, right now we feel decent about the offensive line depth. We do. We feel like we've got, um, eight. you know, like I said, eight guys there that can play. We've got, you know, three tackles. And I'll tell you this, we've got a freshman that's come in and, and done a nice job in three practices. That's Andrew Nelson. Uh, so we've got, you know, three or four guys there that we think can play. You know, Andrew's got a long way to go, but he's done a nice job in three, day, three days. And then we've got, uh, you know, at center, we've got Ty Hollow there who's had a really good three days. And then uh, the next guy in at center would be Angelo Mangiro, and he's done a nice job in the three days. He can also, Angelo's a very valuable guy because he can play guard too. So he, he's kind of the swing guy. We call him the swing guy of those three inside positions. And then you've got Diffenbach at left guard, and you've got Urschel at right guard, but you've also got, you know, Anthony Alosi, who's come back and, and done a nice job in the offseason, and we expect him to play for us. And obviously you've got Eric Schreib that can play guard or tackle who's come back and, and done some decent things so far. So we feel good there. Now on the defensive line, losing Brad Bars isn't the greatest thing in the world. You know, obviously you lose depth when you lose, and, you know, when you have an injury. But like we said from day one here, it's the next man up. And so when we look at our starting defensive line right now, you basically look at five guys. You've got Deion Barnes, you've got C.J. Olignan, you've got uh, inside, you've got Daquan Jones, who's had an excellent three days. You've got uh, Kyle Boblitz and Austin Johnson. So there's a decent rotation there of guys. Now, when you look at the defensive end spot, who can help us there? You know, can Evan Schwan keep improving and, and help us? Uh, you know, can any of the freshmen, can, can Curtis Cothran or Garrett Sickles come in here and help us? So we feel decent about the depth. You know, where the depth is more of a concern is, is uh, like I've said, is, is linebacker. I mean, you guys can read the roster. Uh, you know, our three starting linebackers are really good, really good. Uh, you know, tough guys, smart, instinctive players. Uh, ben Klein has been in and out with a shoulder issue, and, uh, uh, you know, hopefully he'll be ready for Syracuse. Um, and then we also have some young players there, like Brandon Bell, who's a freshman. Gary Wooten, who's basically a freshman. Uh, those guys have, have improved. So, you know, that's an area where the depth is more of a concern. Bill, can you talk about John Butler's uh, transition to his new role? Sure. Yeah, Neil, he's uh, he's done an excellent job. He's he's one of the best coaches I've ever been around. He he uh, he's a quick-minded guy. He's tough. The kids really respect him. He's a great communicator. Um, it's a competitive practice because he and I are very competitive people, and uh, you know, so it's it's been a great. Great thing for our program. He, he's an excellent coach with obviously a very bright future. Bill in Chicago, you praised Trevor Williams and Jordan Lucas. Yeah. I guess what what did those guys do in spring ball that they kind of you know put them where they're at now in terms of being you know, the favorites of the lockdown of starting spots at corner heading into the fall? Right. Well, those guys uh, they did. They had a nice spring. You know, Trevor obviously we moved him from receiver over there, and he had a, he did a nice job in spring practice. And both of those guys have come off, uh, come back to training camp and started off really well. Uh, they're bigger. You know, both of them hover around six foot, six foot one. They're close to two hundred pounds. They they move well. They've got good speed. They've got an ability to change direction. They've got good ball skills, and uh, they're tough and competitive. So both those guys have done a nice nice job so far. And you know, again. You know, neither one of them, especially Trevor Jordan, played a little bit last year, but, you know, neither one of them have really played a, a, a number of snaps in a game. So, you know, the games will, will determine how, how well they're doing. But, I mean, you know, so far, so good. As you uh, get into camp or start preparing for games, what is the balance that you have to find between working guys, get them ready for games, but not pushing them too hard? Yeah, that's a, that's a balance that we talk about every single day, Corey. You know, we um, – uh, you know, even today we sat in our staff meeting this morning and talked about how we wanted to do things, uh, you know, t today. So we we've got a lot of reps in practice, you know, okay, so you, you, let's say you get 50 to 60 reps in practice. Um, you know, one thing that we try to do is get our, get our number one groups uh, quality good reps. 
We don't want to get, give them 50 million reps in a practice, but we try to get them quality, good reps. And then we try to get the younger players a lot of reps. Like get those guys in there and let them play football. And then maybe at the end of practice, we'll, we'll instead of doing you know gassers where we run back and forth on the field, we feel like our team's in decent condition. Maybe we'll do more upper body conditioning, things like that. So you know we just try to be creative every single day to to make sure that our team's as healthy as possible for Syracuse. Bill, uh, to your left, you talked about the defensive ends a little bit earlier, and I'm wondering with Deion Barnes, if you recall, you know, the first time you met him, and what makes him so productive. Well, first, first of all, football is very, very important to him. It's very important to him. It's, it's something that he has a passion for. Uh, secondly, he's an excellent athlete. He's big, strong. He's, he's become even stronger and more physical in our weight room. So uh, now that's carried over to the field. So I, I believe he'll play the run better this year. He's worked hard on that in the offseason. Uh, and, you know, he can rush the pass. Everybody knows that. He's a dynamic player, and uh, you know I'm very glad he's on our team. Bill, um, Alan Robinson, uh, obviously a big time year for you guys last year. Um, with that comes, you know, teams have now had an entire off season to, to check him out, look at him. Um, what's he been working on in the off season to kind of deal with that um, added attention he'll receive, and what's the key for him to have success this season? Well, part of that, you know, part of the added attention that he probably will receive, you're probably right, is the fact that, you know, we've got other guys that can catch the football. You know, we've got obviously other receivers. We've obviously got some talented tight ends. We've got guys in the backfield that can catch the ball. So, you know, those guys, we have to get the ball into that, those positions a little bit more, too, and not just depend on Allen, you know, all the time. So that'll help. Uh, you know, and then the other thing that Allen's done is he's worked on just having better knowledge of the offense. He's worked on his own skill set. He's faster, he's stronger. He's really worked hard this summer to, to come back in tip-top condition. And, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna move him around a ton. You know, last year he basically played X for us, and, you know, he'll, he'll be all over the map, you know, this year. Bill, um, the linebacker depth you're talking about, um, it seems like you guys brought in a bunch of run-ons uh, to compete. Did you target? Was that a specific target that you guys talked about? Um, is kind of bringing in a bunch of kids and hoping a couple of them pan out and can play for you? Sure. I mean, we brought in. Um, you know, we have we do we have a number of linebackers that are uh, run-ons for us, and um, you know, sure that that's part of the strategy for the depth issues. You know, at that position, and uh, you know, maybe some of those guys can help us on special teams. They're, they're, the, what we've seen right now is is that uh, the run-on program, I, I believe our staff did a really good job of bringing some guys in there that have upgraded our roster. You know, the top end of our roster hasn't changed that much, you know, a little bit here and there, but that, that other end of our roster has, has really changed a lot, and, and that's uh, a credit to our staff for going out there and finding some candidates to be able to, you know, contribute on special teams, add depth on offense and defense, things like that. So, you know, it's only three days in, so we'll keep working with those guys, but it's a good group of guys. Hey, Bill. Uh, I was